So in this presentation, we continue the series of studies of the God of Revelation. Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament warns us, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. In the Old Testament, God's people were also repeatedly warned about judgment for the incessant worship of false gods. For example, Jeremiah 1, 14 to 16 says, Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, said the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me, and have burned the incense unto other gods, and worship the works of their own hands. But the people of God continued rejecting the warning, and finally severe judgment came. The nation was destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and the Jews taken into captivity. But what about these last days? Is there a warning message for God's people who are worshiping false gods and the idolatrous world? Revelation 14.6 begins a view of the last work of the gospel in the earth. Now, just before the end of all probation, God sends a final warning. Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. But who is this God we must fear and worship? In this series, we continue to examine the book of Revelation to see who is identified as that God to be worshipped. Last time, we considered all the texts in the book of Revelation with the word throne, because we looked at him who sat on the throne. We saw generally that the individual on the throne was God the Father. In this presentation, we consider all the texts in Revelation that contain the word God. The word God is found 90 times in the book of Revelation. Many of the verses talk about God without identifying who God is but we will see what we can learn from how the word is used in the book of Revelation. Let's go. In verse one, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Verse 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you, and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and had made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verse 9. I, John, who am also your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. In Revelation 1, there's an individual who was and is and is to come, before whose throne there are seven spirits, and there's Jesus Christ who has made us priests to God and his Father. So we know that God is the Father of Jesus Christ. God is he which was and which is and which is to come, past, present, and future. He is eternal. He sits on the throne before whom the seven spirits of God are. But we also see the word of God is put alongside the testimony of Jesus Christ. In Revelation, Jesus Christ is a different person from God. Jesus Christ is not God. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, we read, 
He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, right? These things said the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. So what do we see here? In the new heavens and new earth in Revelation chapter 22 contains a tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And in verse 18, Jesus is the son of God. Chapter 3. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. We discussed in the first presentation how Jesus has the seven spirits of God. In chapter five, the seven spirits of God are seven, four to the eighth from the Lamb. It is through Jesus we get the Holy Spirit. In verse 12, Jesus repeatedly states that God the Father is his God. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. In verse 14, we read, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou with cold or hot. Jesus is called the beginning of the creation of God. Christ is not a created being. In other scriptures, we realize that Jesus is the one through whom God made all things. That was shown in the second presentation on the Creator. Chapter 4, verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. We have previously seen that the individual on the throne in Revelation 4 is God the Father, which was and which is and is to come. He that liveth forever and ever, Lord God Almighty, the Creator. The seven spirits are the seven spirits of God. They represent the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God the Father, not a separate being. Chapter five. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Jesus has redeemed us to God. He is not the God of revelation. He is the mediator between us and God. This perfectly matches what the rest of the scriptures tell us. Ephesians 4, 4 to 6. There's one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and to all and in you all. And 1 Timothy 2, 5 to 6, for there's one God 
and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In Revelation 6 verse 9, we see the word of God and testimony again. Verse 9, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Revelation 7, verse 2 to 3. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. In chapter 7, we see the 144,000 who are sealed with the seal of the living God. We later see in Revelation chapter 14 that these 144,000 are sealed with the name of the Father in their foreheads. So we realize that it is God the Father's name. The name of their God is written in their foreheads. They have an intelligent worship of the one true God. Verse 1, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And we will get back to Revelation chapter 22, verse 3 to 4 later, but here again we see it. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. So for now it suffices us to see, in fact, that all the redeemed in the new heavens and the new earth have God the Father's name in their foreheads, not the name of the prevalent deity worship today, the Trinity. Revelation 7, 10 to 17 continues. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and round about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and the honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these that are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. God sits upon the throne and the lamb is present as well. Revelation clearly distinguishes that the lamb is not God, but he is with God. In Revelation 8, 2 to 4, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came up with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. In Revelation 9, verse 4, and it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Verse 13, and the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Revelation chapter 10. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he had declared to his servants the prophets. 
Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. 13. And the same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Verse 16. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. Verse 19, and the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were great lightnings and the voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. God is central to the message of revelation. Which God? The one true God, God the Father. In chapter 12, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Verse 17, and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God is come because the accuser of the brethren is cast down. Previously, we saw that the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Here we see the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not the God of revelation. In chapter 13, we read of the blasphemous beast which rose up out of the sea. Verse 6, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The predominant worship on earth will be of the beast, not of the one true God. Do we want to be following the same blasphemous worship as the Antichrist beast? Chapter 14, these are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb with whatsoever he goeth. That's the 144,000. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying, with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And verse 19, and the angel thrust in a sickle in the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Verse 10 describes the heavenly agencies. God 
the lamb, and then the angels. Verse 12 has the commandments of God alongside the faith of Jesus. And verse 19 mentions the wrath of God. The wrath of God is again mentioned in Revelation 15. Verse 1, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels the seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. The Song of Moses, the Servant of God, and the Song of Lamb. The Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary states of the Lamb, the deliverance of the saints was wrought by Christ, the Lamb of God. See on chapter 17, verse 14. And it is but natural that he should be adored and exalted in the Song of Deliverance. Revelation chapter 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, who had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven, because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. So we see the full title, Lord God Almighty. God the Father is the God of heaven. And in Revelation 16, his wrath is evident because men have persecuted his saints while blaspheming and rejecting his call of mercy. But Satan and his angels are not inactive. Their time is short, and Revelation 12, 12 tells us the devil has come down having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. So Revelation 16, 14 tells us there are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Verse 19, and this great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Verse 21, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. The devil is leading the leaders of the whole world to array themselves against God Almighty. And the Lord God Almighty is responding. Which side do we want to be on? The side of the devil and the, and the angel of his angels and the blasphemous power that 
has created a system of false worship in, in this world? Or do we want to be on the side of the righteous, worshiping the true God and having the name of the true God, God the Father, in our foreheads? Revelation 17. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the horn, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put into their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. In Revelation 17, we read that after supporting the harlot, the nations of the world will hate her and destroy her. After they have fulfilled Satan's will in fighting against God, they will execute God's judgment on the great blasphemous, deceiving harlot that reigns over the kings of the earth. Revelation 18. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God had remembered her iniquities. Verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Verse 20. Rejoice over her. Thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Revelation 18 discusses the hall of Babylon, but notice it is God who, did, who judges a whole destructive agenda. Revelation 19. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Verse 4. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, hallelujah. And the voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Verse 9. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw a heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he that judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So, in Revelation chapter 19, God the Father is the Lord God Almighty, and his son, the Lamb, is faithful and true. Verse 13. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth went a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress and fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel stand in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to the, all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves unto the supper of the great God, that ye might eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered 
together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant of them were slain with the sword of him that sat on the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. In Revelation 20, from verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when this thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. In verse 4, we see the witness of Jesus and the word of God. That's the same thing we saw in chapter 1, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. In verse 6, we see priests of God and of Christ. Revelation continues to distinguish God and Jesus Christ. Revelation 19 describes the destruction of the wicked at the second coming of Christ. In Revelation 19, those who have attacked and persecuted his bride, even while she made herself ready and became purified and granted that she should wear fine linen, clean and white, which is the righteousness of the saints, imparted righteousness. Those who have attacked and persecuted his bride are all slain when Christ returns for his bride. And even those righteous who have died in Christ rise when Christ returns. This starts the 1,000 years, after which the lost are given the opportunity to stand before the righteous king of heaven in the second resurrection, chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20. If the first and second resurrections and the 1,000 years are confusing, that is something that can be studied further, or you can ask for an explanation, even privately. Summarily, when the wicked are resurrected after the thousand years, Satan deceives them into surrounding the camp of the saints and the beloved city. God appears on a great white throne and all the resurrected now stand before God to be judged out of the things written in the books according to their works. And then they are faced the second death by which they are devoured in the lake of fire, all who are not found within the book of life. Judgment. The book of Revelation shows that the hour of God's judgment is not just upon us, that judgment has started. We have studied that the God of the book of Revelation is God the Father, certainly not any trinity. In the first angel's message, God is calling us back to true worship, worshiper of the creator, God the Father himself. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Who is God according to the book of Revelation? God the Father, who sits on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, which was and which is and which is to come, the Lord God Almighty, who created all things. Revelation is very clear who is God referred to. God is the Father of Jesus Christ, the Lamb slain for us. Yes, we are also to worship God's Son, the Lamb, for his role in the salvation of all, but the true God 
of the Bible and the true God of Revelation is God the Father. But what happens after the judgment? Second Peter 3 tells us, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, well, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of God, where the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. In Exodus, a sanctuary was built to mirror the services of the heavenly sanctuary. The language of Revelation is replete with sanctuary imagery. God says in Exodus 25, 8, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Ezekiel promised a time when the tabernacle or dwelling place of God would be with men. Chapter 37, verse 27, my tabernacle shall also be with them. Yea, I will be their God and they shall be my people. But in his sinful state, man could not exist in the presence of the holy God without immediate death. During his incarnation, Christ came to live with us as Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In Matthew 1, 23, we read, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. John chapter 1, 14 and 11 to 13 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He came unto his own, and his own received them not. But as many as received them, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Jesus came to dwell among us and to give us power to become sons of God. But in the future, we hope not just to dwell with Jesus. After sin and death are destroyed, the recipients of saving grace can now dwell in the presence, not just of Jesus the Lamb, but with God the Father himself. Revelation 21 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a taste of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit of a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like jasper stone, clear as crystal. Do you remember the phrase Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending in Revelation 1.8? Who was that? God the Father. In Revelation 21.6, we see that God the Father himself shall dwell with the redeemed. But we see later that God will not be by himself. 
verse 22, and I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God would lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. In the holy city, the glory of God shines forth, and we see the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, two separate individuals. Jesus, the Lamb of God, is not the Lord God Almighty. Revelation 22, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Verse 3, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets had sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Notice the divine person's presence. God the Father himself and his son the Lamb dwell with the redeemed. And still, scripture emphasizes that it is the Lord God Almighty together with the Lamb. God the Father is still the highest majesty. And did you also notice, all throughout the book of Revelation, there's one sitting on the throne, God the Father. In the new heavens and in the new earth, when God and Christ dwell with the redeemed, it is the throne of God and the Lamb, the one true God and his Messiah, the Lamb, who we have worshipped all along. The Great Controversy, page 678 reads, and the years of eternity as they rule will bring richer and still more glorious revelations of God and of Christ. As knowledge is progressive, so will love, reverence, and happiness increase. The more men learn of God, the greater will be their admiration of his character. As Jesus opens before them the riches of redemption and the amazing achievement in the great controversy with Satan, the hearts of the ransom thrill with more fervent devotion and with more rapturous joy they sweep the harps of gold, and 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of voices unite to swell the mighty chorus of praise. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever. Revelation 5.13. The great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is clean. One pulse of harmony and gladness beats throughout the vast creation. From him who created all flow life and light and gladness throughout the realms of illimitable space. From the minutest atom to the greatest world, all things, animate and inanimate in their unshadowed beauty and perfect joy, declare that God is love. The book of Revelation closes with a command, who to worship? Verse nine, worship God. And another warning, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this book, if every man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are within this book, verse 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Let's summarize what we have learned. God is not a trinity. God is the father of Jesus Christ. God is the father of the Lamb. In the book of Revelation, the following terms are designations only of God the Father. The one who was and is and is to come, the one who liveth forever and ever, the Almighty, the one sitting on the throne, God, Lord God, Lord God Almighty. In most places in Revelation, including Revelation 1.8, the word Lord refers to God the Father only. But there are some places in Revelation where Lord refers to the Son, the Lamb. If we look through the other New Testament books, we can see how the gospel writers, Paul and the other apostles, consistently address God and Jesus. The question remains, who is God? 
I hope we can all answer. As we have seen in the book of Revelation, God is the father of Jesus Christ. God is the father of the Lamb. I pray we accept God's everlasting gospel message of Revelation 14, 7. Fear God, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Amen.